So I'm gonna start with a basic sawtooth wave out of a synthesizer so we can hear what a low pass filter does. Hey guys, I'm Vulture Culture, and today we're gonna to talk about how to listen to filters. So first off, what exactly is a filter? So if we open up Filterverse, you can see that on the default Swiss Army knife, we have five different types of filters. We have low pass, band reject, band pass, peak, and high pass filters. So let's start with the low pass filter as it's the most common type of filter you're gonna see time and time again in synthesis. Low pass filters are also called high cut filters and I'm of the opinion that's a more intuitive way to think about what a low pass filter does. It cuts out the high end of any audio signal. So you can see as I lowered the cutoff frequency of the filter that we lost more and more high end from the sound. Let's visualize that with a frequency analyzer so we can really see what we're hearing. One of the first things you might notice is that we're not actually removing all of the harmonics from the sound as we sweep the filter down. There's a very nice gentle roll off of those frequencies and that's because we're using what's called a two pole or 12 decibel per octave filter. The Swiss Army knife filter in Filterverse can go from two poles to four pole and you can see the image here shows this that we get a steeper cutoff. So if I do that same filter sweep again, you can see that we're actually getting a steeper roll off of those higher harmonics, which begs the question, what are harmonics? Well, actually harmonics are essentially just the fundamental building blocks of sound. With this particular graph, it's actually easier to see if I play a higher note and freeze it. So you can see a sawtooth wave is actually just a series of harmonics, starting with the fundamental, which is the lowest note, and then every time that frequency doubles, we have another harmonic. And that keeps going all the way up to where we can't hear anymore. And this highlights a couple of reasons why a sawtooth wave makes a lot of sense to test a filter with, as a sawtooth wave contains both even and odd harmonics. I'm gonna play that same note again, but this time I'm gonna morph the sawtooth wave into a square wave, and I want you to see what happens to the harmonics. So you can see that the square wave actually only has odd harmonics. It doesn't have even harmonics. And so even though square waves sound cool, if you're listening to a filter and you're using a square wave, you're only getting half of the picture. Another thing I like to do when I'm listening to a filter is actually to use a very low note. And the reason for that is, is that you'll notice that right now there's not that many harmonics that you can actually hear going all the way up to 20 hertz or so. If I play a lower note, you can see that as we sweep the filter, there's many more harmonics that we can pick out, giving us more range to listen to. Jumping back to Filterverse, if I play a really high note and I try to sweep the filter, you'll notice that we won't really hear much past a very narrow range. All throughout this range, you're not even hearing a difference because there's no content down there. There's no such thing as subharmonics. So if I sweep the filter below that, we're just not hearing anything at all. So using a low note in a sawtooth wave makes a lot of sense. Now, most low pass filters will sound about the same, but it's really the resonance which adds the character to the filter that we're trying to listen to. So why don't we add a little bit of resonance to the filter and then listen and look to see what we're hearing. If I increase the resonance further, you'll be able to see what's going on. You can see what resonance is. It's just emphasizing the cutoff frequency or the frequency of the filter. And it has a very distinctive sound. So if I push the resonance past 10, you'll see that it starts turning red. That means it's self oscillating. And you can see that even though I'm not playing a note on my keyboard, that I actually have a note here. Kind of sounds like a ghost. 
And that's where the resonance has started to feed back on itself independent of the signal you gave it. And this feedback is actually very similar on something like a tape delay, where if you turn up the delays enough, eventually they'll start feeding back on themselves. It's actually the same sort of process that's going on in the filter. Now, thinking about harmonics again, you can notice that resonance can actually sort of grab a specific harmonic if you set the cutoff frequency to that value. I'm gonna do a sweep again, slowly enough that you can actually begin to train your ear to hear how it steps through the different harmonics. And that's a big part of the character of a filter is the way that it handles different harmonics across the frequency spectrum. So not all filters have an even response across the entire frequency range. In fact, a lot of what we like about old analog filters in vintage synthesizers is the way that they handle frequencies in characteristic ways. For instance, the Roland TB303 has a much squelchier high end, AKA more resonance in the higher frequencies and less resonance lower down. There's also the Q or the width of the resonance band. So in this case, you can see that although the Swiss Army knife is very precise and it has a very precise sound, that the frequencies around this harmonic are being affected by the filter. So it's not perfectly only isolating this single harmonic. Analog filters also display different width values across the frequency spectrum as well. So why don't we check out the difference between what we've been listening to so far, which is a digital sawtooth through Filterverse and a vintage analog sawtooth through an analog filter. I happen to have one of the most legendary filters of all time from the Yamaha CS series of synthesizer. So by itself, the sawtooth looks almost identical. Except you'll notice a little bit of noise appearing there as I take my finger off of the key. And that's just because in the analog circuitry, there's a little bit of noise. Can't really hear it, but you can see it. Now I've programmed a filter sweep without any resonance so we can see what that looks like. So what are some of the things we can see and hear about the CS70M's filter? Well, for one thing, it's got a 12 decibel per octave filter or a two pole filter, and that's what's giving us this nice gentle roll off of frequencies. So unlike a lot of other vintage synthesizers that have a sharper four pole filter, which are gonna cut those frequencies off more aggressively, the CS70M has a two pole filter and we get this nice gentle slope. Of course, you can see the noise here. So with the current gain staging, the noise is happening about 70 decibels below the fundamental frequency with some peaks up into negative 55 decibels or so. Again, we can see that more than we can hear it. So I'm gonna go crank the resonance on the synthesizer so we can hear what that sounds like. So what are some things you notice this time? So one thing is that none of the Yamaha CS series filters are fully self oscillating. We can't make the feedback on an old Yamaha CS synth actually run away where we're hearing just the sound of the filter. So unlike Filterverse and even other synthesizers, we can't make a Yamaha CS filter start to sing on its own by cranking the resonance. The biggest difference that you can see very obviously here is this second twin peak that we have here. And what this is, is a non-linearity. And what a non-linearity translated out of nerd speak is basically distortion or saturation, the same type of thing that happens when you crank a guitar amplifier. And what happens when you add distortion to a sound is you're actually creating new harmonics, which is different than emphasizing harmonics with the resonance of a filter. But for musical purposes, like for anything that has to do with instruments or creativity, you often want a filter to have a little bit of character. So let's try and match the characteristics of the CS70M with Filterverse. So the first thing we're gonna to need to do is add some resonance, right around eight, sounds about right. 
to get that same sort of talky characteristic to the filter. But now what we need to do is bring the number of poles down to two, so we have that gentler slope, and then let's add some drive to the filter. What that's gonna do is it's going to create those non-linearities that we were seeing in the analog filter. So you can see, just like on the CS70M, that now that we've added some drive and we've created some non-linearities, we're getting these new additional peaks, which sound a lot more analog. There's a funny story about Jim Scott, one of the Moog engineers who was working on the original Mini Moog, accidentally pushing the oscillators into the filter by about 15 decibels more than he should have. And it generated all of these beautiful harmonics. And when they tried to pull it out, when they realized the mistake, everybody was like, oh my God, it doesn't sound nearly as good. And so they shipped mini Moogs with this 15 decibel mistake, allowing you to overdrive the filter by turning the oscillators up too loud. And that became the classic sound. So just use your ears and set it to whatever you feel sounds best. We're musicians, we're not scientists in lab coats studying this stuff under microscopes. So use the tool like a musician would.